Hello, everyone. Um, so we're live on the air here at Swarthmore College's WSRN 91.5 FM. Um, and if you haven't been with us for a while, our phone number is 610-690-5700. You're always welcome to give us a call. Uh, and my name is Michael Wehar. Uh, today we have a special guest. We're really excited to introduce uh, Therese Tan. Um, and she is uh, an entrepreneur. Um and she's a swatty, and um, we're just really excited to have her. So, uh, Therese, could you quickly introduce yourself and then tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey? Yes, of course. Thanks, Michael, for that introduction. And I'm so happy to be here. Uh, my name is Therese Tan. I graduated in 2019 at Swarthmore, so I'm also a fellow swatty. And a little bit about myself, you can summarize it pretty easily in one sentence is I'm just a gal who really likes science and food. <laughs> um, my, I'm trained in biology specifically, um, and I currently work in the biotech industry. I work as a project manager, but one of my big, big passions in life is food, particularly baking and cooking. And I actually started my baking business during the summer after my sophomore year at Swarthmore in the kitchen of Pittenger Dorm and selling to Hobbs Coffee Shop. Uh, so that's how I got my, my baking business really started and have been growing my business for, you know, since 2000, I believe that was 2017. So it's been a hot minute been still running the business, um, even working my, even though I'm working my day job in biotech in Boston at the moment, I'm still running Tosca Bakery. And it's been a really, it's been a blast trying to, you know, navigate um, post-grad life and, you know, trying to make a living, but also pursuing a side business. Um, you know, actually, being a blast would be kind of an overstatement. It's been a, it's been a journey. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's a little bit more about myself, and it's been um, yeah, happy to answer your next question. <laughs> well, thank you so much for giving us that information about your journey. Um, that's so cool how you started this at SWAT and you sold to Hobbs. Had some of your um, yes. Yeah, and I know that's a local spot that's here. Um, so one of the things I wanted to ask is, you mentioned you have a love for food. How did you first get into baking? Have you been baking your whole life, or is this something you started at SWAT? Yeah, it is. I feel like my, my love for food has been, I think it's always stuck with me. So my, my family... Um, are refugees from the Vietnam War, and they immigrated here, I would at least say 1990, 1976, I believe. Um, and I was born here, born in Southern California. Um, and I was very blessed to have so much good food, home cooked, growing up, like these wonderful feasts of all these like Vietnamese dishes, home cooked by my grandma and all my aunties and my mom. So kind of that itself was like the foundation of my love for food. And I would say baking, baking in particular probably started when I discovered the Food Network and Cooking Channel in middle school, I think probably sixth grade, um, specifically one show called um, Good Eats with Alton Brown. And he, Alton Brown was one of the first, I would say, TV chefs or cooks that really explained the science behind why recipes were the way they are and under, like and explaining the role of ingredients and why certain reactions happen or why certain cooking or baking tips um, worked. And, you know, like, why do you have to wait for butter to turn room temperature to make good cookies? Like, why can't you use cold butter? Um, or like, why do you have to use a water bath for making cheesecake so that it gets that like very creamy consistency? Um, and watching that particular show and 
specifically his baking explanations of his recipes, got me hooked. So that's, I would say, my love for baking in particular started in middle school after watching Alton Brown's Good Eats. Um, I don't remember which episode, but I just remember the slew of episodes and one particular memory of him explaining when how to make meringue, which is, you know, when you whip up egg whites with sugar and it turns from this gloopy mess into this, you know, super opaque fluffy marshmallow-like texture and showing us um, like egg whites are 95% water and 5% protein. Um, That's why, you know, gym bros are always like, oh, I ate egg white omelets for breakfast because you got to get that protein. And it's like, it's because egg whites are mostly water and protein. And when you add sugar to it, it unravels the protein structure and then re-ravels it around sugar crystals so that it expands. So it creates like a whole, totally new structure. And I remember he explained this using chicken wire to show us like, this is how before the structure of these proteins were like kind of crumbled, like this tangled mess. And then with after it's like whipped manually with the sugar, it creates like this new structure that's a little bit more uniform and like showing chicken wire to like showcase this new form of these proteins and these egg whites to turn into meringue. And I remember watching that and I was like, this is so cool that he was able to explain that with chicken wire. And like, it was so, it's, I mean, it still sticks to me. I, like I watched that when I was uh, sixth grade. So maybe I was like eight years old. I don't, well, however old sixth graders are. And I'm now I'm 24. So like, I still remember that and just thought it was really cool and realized, man, that's something I would love to be able to do is like explain science through baking or understand baking that well enough to, uh, to be able to know why things happen the way they are. Um, so I would even say it kind of segued my love towards like science too. Um, but yeah, that's, that's my, that's how I got really into baking and in around middle school. Well, I'm having so much fun just listening to you talk about food and science and how they come together in baking. And um, I, I just get excited when people are passionate about what they're doing. And it was so cool how everything you said really reinforced how baking is the combination of these passions. Um, I, I think that's really neat. So my next question, how did this turn into a business? Is that Mm -hmm. something you wanted it to turn into? Or was that kind of just the obvious form of how you'd be able to share your creations with others? Yeah, that's a great question. And the answer to it is absolutely not. It was not intentional in that way to feel like a business was the right mode of getting, combining all these passions. Um, it actually was, it started off much more as a joke um, because so my my immediate family is my aunt and uncle. Um, so my aunt's related to me, she's Vietnamese, but my uncle, she married an Italian man um, and he has this family secret recipe for I think like fourth generation now passed down along. Um, and it is a biscotti recipe that originated from Naples, Italy. And the biscotti recipe is quite, it's quite unique in his family that it's not like, it's, it's not crunchy. It's quite soft. Um, So it's more chewy and soft in texture. And it's made with cranberries, pistachios, apricots, lemon zest, like very fruitful, very fragrant. Um, And they've always talked for years about wanting to start a biscotti business, Um, but they had full-time jobs My uncle works in music production, manufacturing for microphones, and my aunt works in tech. And they've always just talked about it, but never pursued it. And I don't remember when I said this, but I I said it offhandedly, half joking. We said, at one point, you know what, I'll start the business for you guys. Like, I'll, I'll go ahead and do something and see where it goes. So the summer after my sophomore year, I was working a research job, research summer internship in at Jefferson Medical School in Philadelphia. And 
I just honestly it was a really dull internship <laughs> I, I I really didn't enjoy my day-to-day work um and I needed I just needed actually to do something that kept me that just challenged me and just kept me not bored <laughs> it interests me so I said oh you know what I had this had been on my bucket list for a while I might as well try it so I whipped up my family's batch of biscotti and I brought it to you know the coffee shop that I know the best at that time which was Hobbs and I was pretty good friends with um, Chris who's one of the employees at Hobbs who does all like their his all the cookies there Um, so I gave him a batch and I said you know I know you guys don't sell biscotti this is my family's like recipe. Um, I would love for you guys to try it and see if, you know, people are on board for selling it. And I gave it to them. I, you know, kind of sitting on the edge of my seat for like, you know, a week and a half. And I believe two weeks later after I gave that batch, they said, Therese, we all love it. Let's talk numbers. And that's how it started. Um, it's amazing to just as I said, to hear you talk about this, it sounds like you're a natural at anything related to food, science, and business. Um, to me, it sounds like you you approach this in a very simple but amazing and successful way. Um, so, has this business been growing? Um, do you are you getting new customers? Um, and and what's that like? Yeah. So, you know, I, I will preface that it was re it was a lot easier growing the business when I was at Swarthmore. Um, and because it was pre COVID as well. Um, cause right after Hobbs accepted school started and then all of my friends came back on campus, you know, returning from summer and they all were, freaking out and said, what, Therese, you're, you're selling your stuff at Hobbs. Like, can you bake my birthday cake? And then, you know, birthday cakes became, you know, anniversary cakes. My friends started telling their professors and professors started ordering from me and asking to make their, you know, kid's birthday or baking something for their seminar classes. And then professors and, and students started telling school admin. And that's when, like, Swarthmore admin started asking me to do, like, all campus events with like alumni weekend or IC50, um, not IC50, the the IC, the international group. IC50 is actually a term used in biotech, which is why I was saying that. But anyways, um, a bunch of clubs on campus and then Swarthmore's farmer's market got a heard of me, like heard of me through, I think, someone and then invited me out to do farmer's market events at the Swarthmore's farmer's market. Um, And then during like during those few years at college, it really grew quite quickly to a point where I was getting, I had to have a wait list for people to order my stuff because I was just getting so like, it felt like my, it felt like the business was like another class, like another four credits of class that was like taking up a lot of time. Um, I, I did not sleep very much during those few years of college, um, after the business started. And then once I graduated, I moved to Boston, um, getting a job in biomedical research and, you know, was building my base there by connecting with like local restaurant events. And I baked, I did a couple of dessert events for some pop-up restaurant pop-up restaurants in the area and also doing some like maker's mark maker's market with the my job at the time which was at the Broad Institute um so things were going really well then COVID hit and it took a really it definitely took a really big hit on the business and now I would say I I try to build up a bit of a like customer rapport again and I would say I'd be getting like one to two orders per month and it's just through word of mouth i haven't been aggressively marketing or trying to really grow the business at the time um just because i like after the broad so about 
I like last year, a year ago, I took on a new job, which is where I currently work as a project manager in like a pharma industry job. And that's been a little bit more time commitment. So right now I'm not actively intentionally growing the business just because I have that day job to focus on. Um, And I'm okay with that. I think once there will be another chapter when I have a bit more time to put in more time and effort to continue growing the business, because this is going to be like, this this is a business I'm going to have for life. Like I'm going to keep working on it. So I'm not in any rush to try to like get to peak, like scaling it up as soon as possible. Um, So that's where I'm currently at. That's kind of like the overview of what has happened since um, graduating. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with where it is right now, just having like one to two orders a month. Um, I thought it was really interesting how the way, you, the way you described it, it sounded like the Swarthmore community was very supportive of your business and you were getting a lot of orders, you were getting a lot of customers through this local community. And that's, that's awesome to hear because um, there are a lot of students on campus who have some interest in entrepreneurship and things like that. And I think it would be great for some students to pursue challenges or problems the community here might have and turn the community here into potential customers and to be able to benefit uh, the school or the students or the local people. Absolutely. Uh, And the other thing is uh, that was exciting for me to hear that this is something you want to pursue for the rest of your life, whether that's um, as, as a side thing or something more. Um, I think that's, that's really awesome that you found something you're passionate about that you're, you are committed to continuing. So I think I had a few more things I wanted to ask about. Oh, so one of them was, I know you said during COVID, you kind of, um, you didn't have as many orders. You didn't have, you weren't, you weren't pushing your business as much, as much, but I would have thought, but before you said that, I would have thought maybe people were ordering things and you were shipping them desserts or cakes or things like that. But did you ever pursue that? No, I, it was it was something that I definitely had in mind. Um, but I think it was really, it was really, it would have been really difficult, I think. Cause also I was moving around a lot. Um, I hadn't had, a, I hadn't, I wasn't able to have like one particular like place of residence for, you know, over a year. I, I like, I moved a few times. Um, and with shipping and I, and I, because I know that once I start growing the business, that there was going to be a lot of orders coming in, coming in. I wanted to be able to like have the capacity to keep up with those orders. And just knowing that, you know, right out of college, you have a bunch of roommates, you know, living in an apartment, like it's, and you're sharing the kitchen with a bunch of other people too. And with running a business, a baking business out of your home, it would have taken a lot of like people, like my roommate's time and like, you know, space for the kitchen. And I just, I think it's probably going to be in a little bit more time where honestly, like I would love to like, you know, have a place where I'm living alone, like have a place of my own where I'm able to like do that more consistently or have enough capital to be able to like rent a actual like kitchen space out. Um, So it's a little bit more restricted in terms of like resources and space. Um, But I did think about being able to ship, Um, ship and then also do content creation too. Like being able to to, like do recipe videos on YouTube or TikTok, that would be really fun. But again, that's like a little bit restricted in terms of like space, privacy, kitchen time. Um, So that's why it's been a waiting game as I like, build up more of my nest egg to be able to like afford a place like on my own. Well, I can understand that, you know, COVID creates some turbulence in, in people's lives. Also just graduating from college creates some <laughs> turbulence like, and, um, 
And then also, as you all pointed out, you you might need some capital to to really get the kind of kitchen or space that you need. So, I just had a few more things I wanted to ask.、Um, are there any people or books or blogs or anything that inspire you? I know you talked early on about how you first saw. On the Food Network, and that inspired you.、Um, but are there any, again, people or books or blogs that inspire you in your baking or in your business ideas? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So it's really funny you you ask that because I think it was my senior year.、Um, McCabe Library holds a book collection contest every year, where you are you submit. A collection of books under a theme, and you write an essay and explain like why each book is a part of this collection in the theme.、Um, and I, I submitted a book collection, and it was all the books that inspired me or helped me grow my business.、Um, and I was very, very excited that I like I won the the, the competition. So, actually, I think in two thousand twenty or two thousand no no late late two thousand nineteen, um, my whole like all the books that were referenced in that essay was actually like displayed in McCabe for like I think a few months as an exhibit, which was like really really cool. I didn't get to see it in person actually because I was working and I couldn't I wasn't able to make it out there, um. But some of like the books and some of the people that like I referenced there were like, of course, Alton Brown, and then I had some actual like biology and biochem textbooks referenced because I actually refer to that a lot when I'm like thinking about explaining like science into my baking.、Um, I had this great、um, this great cookbook called Salt Acid. Um, Fat and Heat by Salmon Nostrat, which is like she's incredible,、um, and she does like a lot of really cool like illustrations and also deep understanding and explanations of food science in a very like accessible way to anyone who wants to learn how to cook using those four principles like salt, acid, fat, and heat.、Um, yeah, and I I think in that collection like. There were like a ton of other books that I I can't recall all of them,、um, but yeah, that's been. I didn't realize I once I actually wrote that essay, then it became like, oh wow, these are actually like all the. I, it was like a trip down memory lane, like being like, wow, I remember this book really helped me in this way, or like, oh, this other book also helped me in this problem, and some of the other ones were actually like business books too,、um, and. Or self help books to terms of like building your confidence as an entrepreneur and like the feelings of like self doubt that you have and risk tolerance when you like pursue your business.、Um, so I can also I'll send that over too if you're interested. I would love to see it.、Um, so I think I was here at Swarthmore. I've been here. This is my third year at Swat. So I might have been here when they exhibited it. Um, but I I think this is amazing. I I want to any information you have about it. I would love to take a look. That's、um, really cool.、Um, so not yeah, only、I'll、were you,、there. you know, providing this this、um, this service, your your baked goods, your、um, your product to the community here. You even entered this contest the library had, and you won. And you got to inspire others, so this is really neat. I will preface: it was a, it was a, it was a year that the competition was stiff. I was actually one of three first place winners. Like they couldn't, the committee couldn't pick like a clear out, like clear, I guess like hierarchy. So I shared the prize with two other two other people as well. So I wouldn't say that I I won, but jointly with two other people. Well, I, I still think that's impressive. <laughs> so、uh, we're just about to wrap up, and my last thing I was going to ask you is just: Do you have any thoughts, last 
thoughts or suggestions for SWAT students or any listeners? Do you have any recommendations for them? It, maybe some of them might be interested in entrepreneurship or baking or, you know, about to oh, graduate. Okay. What do you have? <laughs> what do you recommend for them? I would say, and this is honestly also advice to myself that I would have to, I, I have to tell myself all the time is don't let the fear of not, of, don't let the fear of thinking that your idea isn't flushed out enough prevent you from actually just going to like going forth and trying to do it. Um, I think, you know, there's a huge culture of SWAT students who have such a high standard for themselves, um, me included, like I am guilty of this as well, of just really, really wanting to put their best foot forward and push, put their best work out forward. And sometimes that hinders yourself from actually just making the leap and just publishing publishing that piece that you've been wanting to publish or pursuing, pursuing that thing that has really scared you. Um, and like I said, I have to tell myself this all the time too, is just like, just do it. Just go ahead and do it because you doing it is progress and there's never going to be a time where honestly, like the thing you go ahead and do will be up to your standards because perfectionism is a lie. Like, <laughs> and um, yeah, take the leap and trust yourself and just know that you're only gonna get better the more times you do something and the more times you try. Um, and it's not a race too. There's a lot of, there's a lot of time ahead and be very kind to yourself as you take these leaps and take these risks. Um, because you should be your best supporter. Like, you know, all of so many, so many self-help books that, you know, like we are our own worst critics. So try to quiet the critic and be, say all the things to yourself that your best friend would say and try to be, you know, the most, your biggest, your own biggest cheerleader and be kind. Thank you so much. Um, so we're just wrapping up now. Um, again, my name is Michael Wehar, broadcasting here from Swarthmore College's WSRN 91.5 FM. And we had a special guest, Therese Tan, um, and she told us about, you know, her initiative to pursue entre entrepreneurship, starting her baking business while she was a student at SWAT and how she's still pursuing that. And um, the business is called Tosca. Is that correct? Tosca Bakery. Great. Yep. And Tosca Bakery. And um, thank you so much. We're going to sign off for today. All right. Thank you for listening, everyone.